Hey guys, you're watching Guitar Chat, the show where we chat to touring musicians to see what guitars they're bringing out on tour with them. And today I'm joined by none other than Mike from Spiritbox. Mike, how are you doing? So good to see you, dude. Thank you for doing this. I know you guys are busy. This is your headline show. How are you finding Australia? First time in Australia with Spiritbox? First time with Spiritbox, yeah. Yes. It's pretty wild. We had a, a full day in Melbourne yesterday and walked around for like four or five hours just trying to yeah, wean off my jet yeah. lag and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really interesting because I find Melbourne to be very um, similar to where I'm from. Nice. In Canada. Yeah. So it's just really cool. It just feels like a familiar... I feel like a lot of people from America and Canada kind of say the same thing. It feels like home, but it's not, but it kind of is. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, the constant, like, it's just like all the food you could ever imagine in one <laughs> condensed place. It's so nuts. It's like all the cuisines you could ever imagine. That's like one of the best parts about Australia being such a multi I ate so much yesterday. What'd you eat? Uh, I can't even remember. <laughs> I literally had a burger like an hour ago. Um, I think I had Simpsons it. burger yesterday. Oh, really? yeah, we walked past it. I'm staying uh -huh. near there. Yeah, nice, nice. Let's get straight into it, dude. Sure, man. Uh, whatever you want to start with, honestly. Let's start with uh, the Jackson. Nice. So this is my um, seven string Jackson. It's the uh, DK Pro Evertune. Yep. I could be wrong, but that is what I think it is. I think I remember that. It's like a DK Modern Dinky. Evertune. You are correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, awesome. I should know I that. I know my Jackson. I know my Jackson. <laughs> but yeah, this thing's a killer guitar. Um, basically, the whole thing is stock, except I just moved. I was going to say, that is the cleanest thing I've ever seen. How Dude. It's like, just like, that's been just patched up with like a little yeah. dot. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, like I, I tend to do that with most of my guitars. Um, Diego, uh, a tech that was with us last summer, he did that for us and uh, dude, I don't know why, like, why would you want a tone knob in 2023? I have one, but it's like, on, <laughs> on the meshes, it's like you have to pull it up to make it work. So oh, it's kind of go. not there. It's just it's there like a, for- It's like a redundant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's there if I need it, but I never need it. But no, fair enough. <laughs> hey, I mean, like to each their own, like I, I, I get it, but also it's just so nice to not have, because yeah. when I'm, you know, mm. it's right there, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Five-way switch. Um, Fishman open core pickups, which I really dig actually, but I think literally after the show, I'm going to drop yeah. moderns in there. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. Um, Evertune, 26 and a half inch scale, 24 frets. And then what I really love about this guitar is the three piece. Yeah, it looks tough. The maple Wingate, yeah. which is great. Um, but yeah, it's a killer guitar. Nice, trust rod adjustment at the heel, perfect. Yep. Um, yeah, this Jackson, I think, took a lot of cues from the Juggernaut models, which is why I actually, I like these ones a lot. Um, yeah. I noticed that when you play, you use your volume knob a lot. Yeah, um, kind I kind of, of abuse sense, it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that from just like session stuff? Just like being so used to rolling off volume? Or? You know, I think that like, I don't trust myself a lot when I play. Yeah. So. I don't know what it is, and I, I have talked to a few other friends and players that do this too. That I've noticed while they're playing, they're constantly rolling. So yeah. Like if I do like a, you know, like a, I'm like right, okay. I'm constantly doing that. Yeah. It's a habit, but yeah. it's also because we have a lot of clean volume swell stuff that yeah. I don't do with a pedal live. So I'm constantly here, right? right? Okay. So, um, but yeah, it's a. So is that a stock pot? You haven't changed the pot at all for the volume? Uh, you know? No, this is all just the way nice. that it came. Yeah, so, and I love it. It's great. Um, I uh, we named it Jerry. Yep. <laughs> um, the reason being is because we have a lot of songs that have like this kind of clean tone that sounds like a bass, which I call oh, I call the... Jerry Seinfeld riffs. Yeah, nice. Um, nice. So this one, because I got I originally got a couple from Jackson, and I was playing around with them, and everything sounded pretty good, and then. This one really stood out on the cleans, and we yeah. do a lot of our clean stuff on the middle position, the pickup. Right. Um, and how we get those kind of like really plonky clean tones yeah. is just with no cab sim on there. Right. Middle okay. position, no cab sim, yeah. Jerry Seinfeld theme song <laughs> yeah. engaged yeah. pretty much. Nice. So, yeah, so yeah, this is Jerry. <laughs> you're flicking to the middle position in songs. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All the time. That's like, ballsy. <laughs> well, yeah, and I mean, I mean, it is. It is. Oh, I'll get into it on this one, but it is. It is possible to um, to overshoot it. Yeah. And it sounds like the characteristic is completely yeah. different, which you don't want. We never use the rhythm tone ever. Mm -hmm. So I'm full blown bridge yeah. or middle. Yeah. That's the whole set. Nice. Much, so. Nice. Okay. That's because I, I always thought they were kind of like split coily tones, but it's literally just the middle. Middle. Nice. I don't know what it is. It's it's like I've I've gone down that rabbit hole of switching, yeah. constantly finding the right tone and stuff, but the middle position for cleans for like those types of riffs and also just kind of clean washy tones and stuff mm. I find to be 
You get a little what bit I of the roundness like. out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Cause I don't know, like it, there is something cool about like the strat thing or like the kind of split thing or yeah. whatever. Um, I like how there's, it's more round and it, you mm. can, like, I would much rather be able to tweak it versus like, this is exactly what it is. And it's going to be this tinny. Yeah. I'd rather be okay. able to kind of like wrap my head around. Okay, yeah. Like I want this part to be a bit, yeah. whatever. Right. So, um, it's more like malleable, I guess, having more broader tone, you can kind of reshape it. Yeah. 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 Totally, man. So, um, but that's, uh, that's this guy in a nutshell. Nice. Uh, what tuning do you have that in? Drop F sharp. So that's stays in drop F sharp and then your pitch shifting yeah, songs. Literally nice. everything. Like yeah. there's songs that we have where choruses, I'm just pitch shifting to one note and it bounces back. Right. Or nice. Like, we have a song called Holy Roller. Stupid song. Uh, but it, it goes, it goes like four or five. Uh, yeah, it steps does. down to like negative six. We have a song called Yellow Jacket that's in uh, D. So is it, Rotoscope in B? Rotoscope oh. actually goes an octave below F sharp in the verses, which is <laughs> again very silly, but <laughs> nice. Uh, no, yeah. that's, that's really cool. I dig that. It's almost like because like it's barely you know at that point. It's kind of more just for like um, rhythmic purposes. Totally. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean like sometimes whenever I'm writing a riff and like let's say it's a chorus or whatever. I'll do like a higher chord and then, you know, Courtney will sing over top of it. And then once we actually listen to it, I'm like, well, that sounds a little bit weak. Like, why don't we actually pitch shift down to that right. note as opposed to doing like, you know, a, a power chord of the ninth fret or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Just pitch shift yeah. down oh, lower. Okay. Right. So yeah. it kind of opens up a whole other world when yeah. you uh, abuse these tools. That MIDI switching. Yeah. 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 Stuff. Yeah. Nice. It, it kind of puts you in a position of like, if this doesn't work one night, you're screwed. But other than that, I mean, yeah. it's pretty good. <laughs> nice. Nice. What songs are you playing with that one most of the time? Um, for the most part, I play at least like the first four, five. And then when I'm kind of just like feeling like I want to change or whatever, yep. um, I'll put this guy on for the most part. But um, sometimes I'll rip the whole set with it. But yeah. usually like third, fourth song, I'll pop it on. And then uh, yeah. usually when we do our short set, like I'll, I'll use the Crayola one for... Uh, <laughs> Crayola one. Yeah, it's kind of, I don't know, I kind of <laughs> just refer to it as the Crayola one. But I'll use that one as uh, the, my drop F guitar so we pitch okay. down half a step yeah and then we're doing the whole song with that but nice yeah sweet if there's anything you could change about that guitar what would you do it and keep in mind i'm asking this because i wonder if you would ever get a sick out of this one day uh <laughs> <laughs> well that's a good question man you know i am not a fan of basswood right that's I'm, interesting to say because a lot of people are fans of basswood i don't know why <laughs> why is that it's like what's up with that i don't know like because i've i've heard people talk about it it's like um, like relatively neutral, but it's also like light and easy to source. Mm -hmm. So that could be also part of the reason. I understand that. Um, yeah, yeah. I like, um, I like, so I like older a lot. Um, Me too. That's yeah. one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. yeah. I guess it would be the, the wood type. Um, I don't know, man. Like I, I tried a few and some of the other ones also had basswood too. And, um, I think because this one has the three piece neck, I was cool with that Yeah. because I find that with basswood, especially when you're in drop F sharp, mm -hmm. it kind of gets muddy. Right. And okay. especially when your primary tuning is drop F sharp, mm -hmm. you kind of have to like work around. around. Yeah, you yeah. It's gotta be. So this one, um, I really like the sound of it. I think it's great, but I think it's because, and I, I, I don't know, like maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. But I think the neck kind of makes it a little bit more snappier in the high yeah. end. Bolt on maple wing guy, like yeah. it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been so used to playing these for so long. Yeah that like these offer such a crazy amount of high end that like it kind of screwed me when I started playing right. wood guitars where I was like, why does this sound so weird? Hollow, yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. It's because yeah. you're playing guitar not made out of wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so. <laughs> they're, they're crazy, they resonate. They're insane. insane. Yeah, yeah. They're wild, they're yeah. absolutely crazy, but uh, that would be the only thing. Everything else, nice. as I said before, like I am dropping moderns in here. Yeah. The open chorus sound really good, don't get me wrong, especially on cleans, but like I've recorded a lot of our stuff with moderns. Yeah. And I just want consistency across the board. Fair. And when you're like playing live, you want the tones to sound the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so ballsy and clear too, you know? So yeah. that'd be the only thing. Wood type, and I'm changing pickups, but tuners, the neck. Uh, I'm obsessed with Evertune, obviously. Yep. One volume, five way. That's great. Beautiful. Do you know what gauges are on there? 74 to 10. Uh, I buy the um, D'Addario eight string packs and then I ditch the 64. Yeah, a lot of people do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 180 on the low string. I don't know. Too thick? I, I think it's. Too thick. I, I use could, a 72. That's dude, my max. 
I'll be honest with you, I like back in 2016 when I started writing Spirit Box stuff, yeah. I just was kind of like, okay, this is a new territory. Like I was used to playing seven strings, but also I was not used to being an F sharp. Yeah. And I found that that key really worked with Courtney's voice. So I was like, yeah. okay, well, I love the thought of having this eight string tuning in a seven string. Yeah. But also where I was from, like, you know, there wasn't eight string packs yeah. readily available. So I stumbled upon that one pack, the eight string, right. the Dario okay. pack, yeah. took out the 64 and, and I was like, you have it. this works. Yeah. And now I've never changed <laughs> Done. that. You know Done. what I mean? And so. the Evertune will like kind of compensate for everything that's mm -hmm. happening anyway. So it's so fine. It's super comfortable. I, I definitely, I, I get asked that question quite a bit about string gauges and stuff. I highly, highly recommend checking out the um, eight string pack and put in away the nice. 64 for yeah. another time. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Sick man, awesome. Let's bring out Crayola. <laughs> this boy. This is my seven string 070 raw model um, in this really gorgeous blue that they have. I can't remember the exact name of it. Um, I used to have a different set of pickups in here that were um, burnt chrome. So that's why the volume knob has right. this on okay, it. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, RC is never used to make an Evertune model. Um, and then when they started making them, I was like, Dude, need one right now. <laughs> I have one, yeah. And they've been so kind to me over the years. And um, this was one of two raw Evertune models that I have currently. Um, and this one's just very special. It's very, very cool. Sick. I love how all the um, like the hardware's matching, like Chrome tuners, Chrome Evertune. Yeah, it's pretty chrome sharp. Pickup guards, yeah. we, we went through a little bit of a blue face. Like lots of blue, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. It's so, blue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I had a lot of blue guitars. This was one of them, and uh, the 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 guitar itself, it's very unique. Um, have you ever played one? I played one once. Do you know um, Jake Hosom Low Pliny's yeah. rhythm guitars? Yeah, he's I've, awesome. Yeah, he is awesome. I played his pink one. And I'm, I just remember thinking like, wow, this is like one of the sleekest, uh -huh. but like, I, I didn't want to call it a guitar because it kind of, it is a guitar, but like, it just felt so different. It's like, like a futuristic to... sword, Lit it's like a weapon, <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? Yeah, like... <laughs> that's exactly what I was telling you. It's like, it's like a weapon, this thing, like, yeah. so thin, so smooth, mm -hmm. neck profile was like insanely thin. I'm like, yeah. this is ridiculous. Like, it felt super good. One of the fastest playing guitars I've ever held, I reckon, yeah. Yeah, man. And that was, that was a thing. It was like, I, when Spirit Box started, I was, I had a, one of their like original six strings that still had wood on it. It was like one of the first ones they made. And I was playing that in my old band, I wrestled the barrel yep. And then um, I didn't have a seven and Pascal was like, well, if you're making a record, you need a seven, like I'll just send you one. Yeah. So he sent me another OG model that was a seven string right. that a couple guys had had on tour for a long time. So it was all beat up and everything. And it had a bunch of like, you know, mojo. On yeah, it. I was literally about to have a bunch uh, of mojo on Yeah, it. yeah. And it had it had a, an ebony fretboard and so like, yeah. Oh, it, really? No yeah. rich light? No rich light. It was oh. it was the pre-switch right. to that whole thing. Okay, talk about on. mojo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was a very unique instrument. I, yeah, I had that thing for years and I recorded most of our stuff with it. And then, yeah, like these, these things just, they sound really good for low tuning. So yeah. Like really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a very unique instrument. There's no wood on it, like I was saying. Uh, rich light board. It's this material, Arium, that's yep. like a liquid and then it- Like a compound plastic. Yeah, or composite like, material. Yeah, 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 They yeah. put that stuff in it and yeah, it's just, it's wild, man. And that's not paint with the raw model. That's just the way that it comes yeah. out, which is great. But this one, as you as you were mentioning before, three-way. Yeah, okay. You know, I, I don't mess with the five. Right. This one is just whatever, but- It is what it is. Modern's in here um, and then 26 and a half inch scale and- that, the fattest cutaway that ever. That guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, super yeah. cool, man. Nice. It rips. Nice. I've actually thought about putting, because I do a lot of split core stuff, but I don't think there's a way to do it, like having it in the volume pot as a oh. push push. But like, I just, with the routing stuff, I actually don't think that's physically possible. Right. Um, but maybe that's something you can think about with the middle position, having it on like a, a push push so you don't have to flick it. But that's smart. That's awesome. I love everything about it. I love the color. Yeah. Um, I love fretboards this one like the 070 doesn't bother me because it's like the signature OCD thing but like plain fretboards love it absolutely yeah. love it yeah, like no clean. inlays like yeah so clean this so one has clean. lumen inlays too so i can figure out oh, where i am nice. which is awesome that nice. one does too actually I yeah yeah that, but yeah it's like i never had them before and then i was so happy that i had it like the first time that i noticed that i needed it when yeah. the like, stage was dark and i was like where the hell yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, okay cool i know a lot of people are curious about evertune i use evertune use Evertune. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people ask like, do you need an Evertune? 
and yes. I say, I, like, <laughs> yes, but yes. like, I mean, you don't need one, but after I try one, I never want a guitar that doesn't have one kind of thing, like. Dude, I used to, like, whenever we played live before Evertune, yeah. I would tune at any point that I was not playing. So yeah. Like, literally, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Especially being in this low of a tuning. One and, like, big pick and you're already out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hard, you know, so like I was always just here. I was never enjoying playing because I was just like in my head being like, tune, tune, yeah. tune. Yeah, 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 yeah. This I literally never touch. And then because we're pitch shifting so much in the X effects. You're perfectly in tune no matter where you go yeah. kind of thing. And it's perfectly intonated because you're literally just, yeah, it's just. Especially on these guys too, because there's no wood. So it's Do these like, move at all? Like, no. Yeah. That's nice. the thing about them, dude. Like it, it, for, for touring and everything, like it's incredible because the neck doesn't move. It's, there's no wood on it, you have to worry about anything. You can literally fly with it from the States to Europe and then yeah. open it up and it's just like perfectly in tune, Perfect. you know? And like the, the intonation's great and everything. So, you know, and, and that's the thing about it is that like, I feel like the Evertune in general gets sold to be like this be all end all best thing. Like I do want to be upfront that with my experience, I had to kind of approach things differently. How so? Well, you know, like with palm muting and yeah. bending to a certain degree, yeah, for so me, are you like, setting it up on the edge of zone three, zone? Yeah, yeah, like literally right at the edge, because you, like when you start to hear it buzz, you just pull it off. A little yeah, bit. Like, <laughs> there's a few songs like soaking the strings or like yeah. holy roller or whatever. You're bending a little bit further. Yeah, yeah. And, and if that zone isn't set perfectly, it chokes you. Yeah, so you have to have it set properly, which is not a huge deal. You yeah. can do it, but it's very easy to do it. But yeah. like, yeah, yeah. On the off chance it's not there, you're gonna sound out. But that being said, like what this does for you completely compensates for everything yeah it yeah, completely I, outweighs any sort of negative connotation like but there isn't like yeah. if, if it's set up right that's what i found in it because i remember like learning silk in the like, oh, my, oh my, <laughs> like i actually need to like set this up to yeah, the set yeah. basically because like if i don't i'm not going to really hit that bend yeah um, it's a fun riff <laughs> yeah it is it is it's very dumb riff. but fun <laughs> nice so you see. thank you so much for showing us the guitars really course, appreciate man. it yeah. and um keen to see them tonight yeah man it's gonna be great